Welcome to the Fire Breathing Kittens. This is an actual pay podcast. Every episode is a self-contained story. It's like a little movie for your ears. So, come listen. Today, we are with Olive. Hey everybody, Olive is a bipedal crocodile. She's a level 8 monk, way of the open hand, and she's wearing brown, loose pants, the better for kicking people, and a Jedi-style battle robe. Tangible. Hey, I'm Tangible Dream. I'm a 200-year-old female forest gnome with long, brown, free-flowing hair. My skin is like wood bark, and I have blue-green eyes that can pierce a soul. I'm about two foot, six inches tall, and about 30 pounds. I definitely want you to know that I am wearing a -a one-of-a-kind Diane von Furstenberg. It has a Chanel belt and a Louis Vuitton purse and a pair of the most beautiful shoes ever designed by Chanel. All in green. Truly beautiful. And our last person... Rain Cloud Moonglow. Greetings, my name is Rain Cloud Moonglow. I am a tabaxi gentleman, a snow leopard tabaxi to be precise, standing about six foot nine. Um, currently, I'm a level five rogue and a level three paladin of the Reveler. Um, today, I'm wearing a very special new outfit. I'm wearing a magical kimono. It's called, it's called the, it's known as the kimono of the late night, of late night boudoir philandering. It's a fey touched garment given to me by my good friend, Tanija Goodfellow. It's kind of a, a silken sky, maybe skil, silken baby blue with beautiful pink and red floral patterning. And it fits me wonderfully. I, I feel fabulous. On the mention of his name, Tanager's Ward. Their body person, Curry, descends the steps leading down to the bar place that is the common area for the fire-breathing kittens. She looks nervously around the room and quietly nails a piece of paper to the wall. What are you doing? What does your Thursday morning look like? Well, Rainclyde is looking for recruits for the Church of the, uh, of the Reveler. And he's approaching people and he's like, have you heard the good news? And most of them don't seem interested, but he insists, no, 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 no. The good news is that you can get as drunk as you want and I can cure your hangover magically thanks to this god, the Reveler. And uh, he's having mixed success, uh, but he's had one or two <laughs> drinks bought for him. He's bought a couple of drinks for other people and he's getting a little bit tooty on it on a Thursday morning. Tangible. Could I ask for a reaction? Sh- you, you mean to what? Yes. Rain clouds doing? Y- y- oh. Or what I do on my Thursday morning when I get a cup of coffee and I have a bagel and I just sit and watch people for a little while and judge what they're wearing and decide if I like or don't like what they're wearing. Because that's what I'd be doing on a Thursday morning because that's what I do every morning. (laughs) Girl, Olive is sitting there with you and they are like not pointing, but like eyebrow gesturing towards individuals and judging. (laughs) That's what we're doing. Friends, friends, I, uh, all of uh, uh, tangible. Have you heard the good news? Uh, well, you might have to be more specific because the coffee is good today, and the locks and the bagels are delicious. So I'm just it, saying. I have a two-part question. Raincloud, how much have you had to drink? Um, I'd say. Uh, tangible and olive. Do you notice how much Raincloud has had to drink? I've had... Is this a commonplace thing that happens? Or is this the first time Raincloud has brought the Reveler to your doorstep? Again, uh, Raincloud has not been keeping track. But he's <laughs> that kind of drunk, you know, at the wedding, um, after the ceremony, but before <laughs> the food, when the champagne flutes are going around. And they just keep coming. And you got to finish it before it gets warm and flat, you know? And everyone's having a good time, and everyone's dressed so well, and the sun is probably out. And before you realize it, you're like, wow, I better cut myself off or uh, this is this is going to get weird at someone else's wedding. That's how many drinks Rainclad has had. This then <laughs> falls to the other two. Is this the first time Raincloud has propositioned the reveler to you? 
No, I don't think so. Olive? Yeah, we've heard Raincloud going around this guild hall for, gosh, ever since Tanager Goodfellow converted him. It's been weeks, and he just keeps talking about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. You can absolutely continue this discussion. We can delve into Raincloud's personal beliefs. Curry nailed the piece of paper to your quest wall. Oh, to the quest wall. I thought it was like to a random wall. No, and no, I no. Was no. Like... The quest wall. <laughs> Got it. You are the fire breathing kittens. You are not signed up for the rapid response uh, stone based. We need someone to help us. You work analog. Someone needs to put paper to the wall if you're going to hear their request. You're old school. Curry has nailed paper to wall. Well, uh, I use this as an excuse to dodge away from the proselytizing <laughs> that Raincloud is doing. And I'm like, oh, I totally would. But uh, look at that job flyer. And I stand up and walk over there. <laughs> Hey, babies, I need a favor. Someone needs something delivered, and I have a bit too much on my plate. Could you help me out? There's money in it, with an exclamation point, no signature. That is what Tanager has wrote on the paper. Um, yes, uh, he prefers me to call him Tanny, baby. Master Tanager needs a kindness. A favor done. This is deeply important. It is so important he ran away. Could you help? And you see, Tanager loves nothing more than messing with people. Curry is absolute sincerity. Olive, you're the only person there. Uh, I ask my friends to join me. I'm like, hey guys, look at this flyer. Tanager posted it. Well, if Tanager needs something, I'm all for it. I'll do. I'll, I'm down. I'll go do that. Sure. What are we doing? What does it say? Let's do that. So these words were not slated for Curry to say or put on paper because paper can be read. Once you have accepted the quest, he needs an outfit delivered. He doesn't know where it's going, but you need to make sure this outfit goes in the right person's hands. You have to go to, and she says with absolute fear, the fashion district. She holds her face and pulls her mouth away from the words. Uh, Raincloud, could you make an insight check? Yeah, one second. <laughs> oh yeah, dice. Well, uh, okay, I'll open it up. All of you can make an insight check. Raincloud might know the relationship of the fashion district to Tanninger. You otherwise are just, like, I'm sorry, those couple streets that, like, where people buy clothes? I got a 15. What the rest of you get? A one. <laughs> I guess you could add six to that. It's like a seven, but I'm just letting now, you know that a was a one. one is a one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, tangible? I got a 13. 13. A little above a one. It's right above a one. Uh, rain cloud, you rolled the highest. Uh, uh, actually, I'm going to start with uh, Olive. It's not... It's. This is a goof. Why is he talking with such seriousness for this small street? Raincloud, the fashion district is the true battleground of this world. We fight for ideology. What we wear becomes us, and we become what we wear. They will kill you if you wear the wrong thing there. So he very casually asks, like, hey, can you deliver an outfit in the fashion district? They're going to rip you apart. So, 
So to be clear, uh, Raincloud on a 15 knows that it's like a physically dangerous place to be. Tanager ran away. He was like, no, I'm out. I'm asking the FBK. Also, if you're not calling the fire breathing kittens FBK, you're failing. FBK all day. Okay. He made this an FBK problem because he cannot handle it. Can you handle it? I resent the suggestion that I couldn't handle it. Of course I can handle it. Do I choose to handle it? Also, yes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, Curry is standing next to the paper she just put up, kind of like waiting for a response. I feel like I can do this, so I'm going to do it too. Of course we can. Why wouldn't we? It's just a fashion district. She looks at you with absolute reverence. <laughs> I pray for you. And she handles over a leather-wrapped package. It is roughly the size and shape of a robe. Would anyone like to make an insight or religion check on this object? I think it's appropriate that I make a religion check, uh, despite having a minus one on that. We're not that kind of cleric. <laughs> We're not. No, but I still got a 14. I still got a 14. What did the rest of you get? A nine. I got a nine. I don't think Olive would be concerned. Like, it's, it's just a package. It's just a fashion district. Meh. You all get that vibe. For some reason, it is scary. The idea that you need to bring a robe no less than five miles away. You just have to walk a piece of clothing. This is the easiest job potentially you've ever done. Or is it? Who carries the package? Well, I am two foot six, but I'll, I'll carry the package. I'll carry it. <laughs> oh. Could you make a wisdom saving throw as you walk sure. about a block away? And then sure, you just I hear can... a little bit of a voice in the, in the absolute echoes of your mind. Yeah, I got a 15. You're going to wear that? This is the way we conduct ourselves? With a 15, you know this voice is coming from whatever's inside the package. And what it's saying <laughs> is you're not dressed right. You, you, you realize, and I say this out loud, you realize this is a Diane von Furstenberg, and it's green. And it goes perfectly with my brown, you know, skin tone and hair and my piercing eyes. This is perfect. I look gorgeous. Not enough. The what? gravelly words are spoken only to you. Olive and Rain Cloud, you see tangible speaking to nothing. <laughs> Oh gosh! <laughs> I, I, are you talk? Who are you speaking to right now, Tangible? Are you talking to me or Olive? No, I'm talking to this package. It's 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 insulting my attire. Um. I I say, give, give it here. Give it here. Yeah, uh, you you should carry this. I don't want to carry this anymore. This is this is rude. This is a Diane von Furstenberg, and I look good. Don't I look I, good, I, Rain Cloud? You do look, I look good, you Rain, look, Cloud? Rain Cloud? Do I you look, look good? resplendent? You look incredible. You're a vision. That's yeah. what I feel. Like. I can't look directly at you. Rain Cloud, could you make a wisdom saving throw as sure. you question your own outfit? Ooh, that's a six. <laughs> Disgusting. You failed what? him. You failed the reveler. <gasps> Dressed like this. Letting people see you, you should hide yourself, Rain Cloud. Hide yourself, this... or put me on. But this was given to me by my responsibility. He's closer to the Reveler than I. Responsibility is hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> you failed, <clears throat> Rain Cloud. Adorn uh, yourself friend, friend... in me. Or never let another see you. Okay, well, I turn to the other two. I turn to the other two. I'm like, uh, do I do I look 
bad right now. I don't. I mean, this is new. I'm still getting used Insight to it. Insight check, Olive, please. All of your party members are acting really weird as soon as they touch this package. <laughs> Do you notice it? 16. You notice. You don't know why. Hey, y'all. Every, drop that package. Every time you touch this package, they immediately hate themselves. <laughs> Everybody, we're going to put the package on the ground and back away slowly. But that's your job, Olive. You have to deliver the package. Yeah. We don't have to touch it. Everybody just set it down. Let's take a breath. Let's reanalyze. You both look beautiful. We're going to think about this from a few feet away. <laughs> that feels deeply wrong to both of you. You you understand you're not touching the package anymore. The curse does not feel you. <laughs> but the reverberation, the idea that you are dressed in any way correctly is such a wrong thought. I mean, I would put it down, but then it won't be able to validate me when I fix my look. Maybe I should try this on. Maybe I should try it on. Maybe I should try it on. I mean, this is the only kimono I own. I should, I should, I should branch out. Uh oh, he's considering opening the package. Olive's gonna do an attack roll. Like I'm not gonna it's obviously non-lethal damage, and I'm not attacking Rain Cloud as much as I am snatching that package. I understand what you're trying to do. If Rain Cloud, if Rain Cloud can beat whatever your attack is, he will grab the package. Right now, you are defensively like a dog, like, being like, no, nobody touch this. <laughs> like, you're throwing your body yeah. over this package. It's not an actual attack roll. It is attack me. Like, it, it is a threat the way that you are putting yourself over this. You know it's wrong. Whatever's in this package is going is already messing everyone's head up. Rain Cloud, please make an attack roll. Attack? Uh, like a, a, an unarmed attack? Do you pull your sword out? No, no. It's going to be unarmed, unarmed <laughs> strike with the claws in. This is my pal. But they're keeping it from you. Ooh. And I got a 22 as well. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Rain Cloud, I mean, please explain yeah. and describe how you knock Olive away. Well, I mean, does he? Can I get a number two? I thought you already <laughs> rolled. So my number, I get, I'm a monk, so I attack twice. And the first one was indeed a 14. That would have been bad. So what was the second one? <laughs> but the second one was definitely also whatever, a 15 plus seven. Now I'm thinking, is that a 22? Uh, I'm not a math guy. It sounds like a 23 <laughs> to me, which is one more than whatever rain cloud presented. Olive. I think it's a 22. Yeah. Rain Cloud does not. It's exactly the same as what Rain Cloud presented. I think it's, it's a tie. <laughs> oh, I guess it is. It's a tie. It is. Hmm. I gently uh -oh. walk over to my friend Rain Cloud as he's experiencing this moment. And as I touch him, I cast Remove Curse, which is instantaneous. It simply breaks the attunement of any magical item that may have an effect. How dare you. And then in that <laughs> moment, the curse is broken. Rain Cloud, you know you look good. It, the, all questions have been removed. Whatever made you feel like for a second that you were not enough, Tangible has removed that from you. <sighs> Oh, what a relief. Thank you. I felt like I was back in school. That was awful. Hmm. Oh, I am enough. I am good enough. Whew. I grab the package and start running down the street. Oh, dang. Tangible. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> Is this... I... Mm. I'm going to chase tangible because I'm like, this package is making y'all crazy. I have a speed of 45 feet. Tangible, how much speed do you have? I... I... Are, is Olive going to use physical action to touch Tangible? Because they have enough movement speed to absolutely sidle up to them. 
are they going to stop their action? That is where a check will be made. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah, I think I'm going to stunning strike because y'all are crazy. <laughs> stunning strike is uh, when I hit with a melee weapon attack, which my monk counts as, I think. Yeah. Please make an attack throw. Six seconds have passed. We are now going to fall into initiative. Like, yeah, you get another action. <laughs> uh, what is your AC tangible? My AC is a uh, 10 on the class. So, Olive. <laughs> I'd have to roll a three to miss you. <laughs> you make contact. What do you do? Yeah, yeah. I, um,. Stunning strike when I hit with a melee weapon attack, which I'm assuming this is a monk ability, monk attacks count, right? Oh, yes, yes, that? absolutely. I, you yeah. have messed this girl up. Well, well, so she's not messed up. Uh, she must make a con constitution saving throw. If you would, Tangible. On my constitution saving throw, I got a natural 20 plus one. Oh, okay, yeah, nothing happens. You can move, you can talk. But uh, I did pop you in the jaw. <laughs> so could you describe... The, so you, you straight up popped her in the jaw. That was the yeah. way your strunning, stunning strike was displayed. Well, it can't talk. Something hit your face, right? Hmm? Tangible, you've been punched in the face by your party <laughs> member. I feel that, and I imagine she must be cursed too, so I cast Remove Curse on her as well. You have wasted a spell slot. <laughs> I, feel, I feel this is true. Olive is the only one who is not cursed. You hear a voice in your head, Tanager. I think I knew that. Where are you even going? Tanager did not give you a destination. He asked simply, can you make sure this outfit goes to the person who needs it? Where are you running, Tangible? Well, I, 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 I was going to run somewhere where I could put it on. <laughs> you survived your attack. Um, this is a question I don't know if has ever been asked. Can you change outfits in six seconds? I'm wearing. Can you take one action to absolutely change what you're wearing? Or do you need... 12 seconds because that gives olive an option she's following you she just punched you in the face yeah okay i i do i uh i i dropped the dress it's a it's a fluid movement i practiced it many times i dropped the dress <laughs> i am uh i am standing naked uh i'm wearing the shoes of course because you know who would i be if i didn't keep the shoes on gross and then i quickly put on I quickly put on uh, the rope. You open this package and you are overcome with blinding white light. Every single piece of fabric that makes up this outfit will overtake you. And you put this on your body. And I'll look good, you're saying. I'm going to look good. Yeah. You look like me. The outfit overtakes you. I look pretty. I look pretty. Make a wisdom saving <laughs> throw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if it had to be someone, at least it's our wizard. 18. You understand that an, a magical object is a, to take your consciousness. I wear you. You do not wear me. You are a mannequin. You know this is a falsehood. This is just a magic item trying to make you small. But you see the desires of this magical item. Okay. <laughs> what does this look like to the rest of us? Uh, nobody, uh, maybe Olive might see... Rain Cloud, you did not follow, you did not attack, you are the most distant to tangible. Okay. Well, I'm going to start following now, anyway. I'm going to try and catch up, because they've stopped. Okay, I'll... well, I'm going to go ahead. 
I'm going to go ahead and cast Remove Curse on myself. Tangible, take your action. Then Olive gets a skill check. And then maybe Rain Cloud gets to see something. But please, Tangible, go first. I'm going to, I'm going to do a... I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a remove curse on myself. I rolled the natural twenty. What wizards? Yes. Nice. You could remove the curse, but with a natural twenty, you see the curse. You see this object. You could make it go away in an instant, but the only thing that this object wants is to be worn. Do you dissipate the curse? You will effectively kill this magical item. You know, I am a true wizard. I believe in magic. I believe in the sanctity of the arcane. I believe that we should always try to keep magic items in the world unless they are cursed. And then, if they're cursed, I I, I think there's a place for them to... to not exist, and so uh, I feel, uh, I feel, I feel compelled to destroy it, even though I'm going to cry because this happened, I and cursed. I don't feel so you good about cursed. it. But I did. Wear me. Wear just wear oh. me, please. You, you, you remove the curse. I want to be pretty. I can make you pretty, tangible. Please, don't kill me now. I gotta kill you. You see a moment where this outfit looks at you and says, I want to be worn. You don't know where I... You do, you're you not the mannequin. You know with a nat 20, you can kill this and remove a, a bad thing from this world. Or... Could you make a good thing by delivering this outfit to the person that needs to wear it? I don't want to be to be worn. To do it. I want to get rid of it. <laughs> I will stop. Do you cast Remove Curse? I cast Remove Curse. <laughs> <laughs> All words are lost. Rain Cloud, you thought you heard an outfit crying. <laughs> Olive, oh. y- you know there was something talking to Tangible. Good or bad or otherwise, it has been removed. Oh. Like a tied pen on a stain, Tangible has bleached away. Whatever this outfit was. Raincloud, could you make a religion or insight check? It's probably going to be insight now, to be honest. Uh, yeah. Oh, you never thought I could make you care about an outfit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding my face in my hands, jaw dropped. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's a 16. 16 insight. It's still there. The outfit exists it maybe is now out of fashion okay but it's right there what was lost by removing the magic from this outfit you still see it you still react the same way this is the tenets of the church of the reveler are we an outfit to be worn or do we wear the outfit And you look at it. It's right there. Uh, Okay, well, Raincloud, I suppose, arrives on the scene. And I think the first thing he thinks is that uh, Tangible is crying because she's been insulted by the, by the, the, the garment. But that doesn't necessarily, yeah, that, but that, and that squares with him still seeing it kind of there. Tangible, tangible, you What's the matter? You, you, you look wonderful. Your, your outfit was, was gorgeous. Don't, don't listen to this thing. It's cursed. You look I... at... Now all glory has been lost to this outfit. It is merely a strip of fabric sitting in a dirty alleyway. But it affected you in a moment. 
Uh, are you okay, Tangible? Uh, I'm I'm in an alleyway and I'm I'm naked and I I'm uh, not pretty and I I killed a magic item that could have been good but it was bad and I don't feel good. But well, Rain Clyde takes off his kimono deftly and puts it puts it around her shoulders and then kind of gathers up her clothes and folds them and uh, then I suppose takes a look at the the magical robe and. Uh, I don't know, in one... So I'm realizing it doesn't look special, but also that it's still magical, and that it's out of fashion. Is that what my insight got me? It is no longer a desirable piece of fabric to adorn yourself with. Okay, well, in that case, Raincloud picks it up and he kind of holds it up. Tangible decided that this is out of fashion. Okay. Well, Tangible, my, my mother used to always say it's... It's not the clothes, it's the hanger, you know? I mean, does that make sense? I I love you very much, Rain Cloud, but you know as well as I do that art in any form has value and, and that we should always be good and true to art. <laughs> it's just the fashion district. Oh my gosh, my friends are crazy. You have never been affected by this curse. <laughs> Olive is the only one who has not been touched by this cursed fabric. <laughs> Olive, Olive, look, you dress marvelously, um, certainly very practically for the job, of course. Um, you really, your look is working for you. You know, I've only recently really gotten into fashion, and I, I, I get why you don't, why you don't get it, you know. But just, just you have to realize that for for people like myself and Tangible here, it's. It's more a way of life. It's it's art. It's it's an expression of the self. We we we, we may need a moment. All right. I won't yuck your yum, but uh, I don't understand what I don't understand what's so delicious. I'll say that. <laughs> no, and sure. I mean, this thing. I mean, it's a bit of silk twists itself in wind, subtly destroyed by the sewer water of it all. You watch this bit of fabric die away. What could it have been? <laughs> but you hold it in your hands. You look at it, Olive, like nothing. Rain cloud sees the possibility. Tangible was touched by this fabric. It touched me! I put it back in the box, and I'm like, "All right, guys, ready to go deliver the package?" Like, can Just, I, yeah. I, I mean, maybe they'll pay us more that we remove the curse from it. I mean, that's a pretty. I mean, you pay good money for that. Yeah, I, I think we're still on track for a great adventure. I see no problem with this. It's easier to transport now. <laughs> Let me just wring some of the sewer water out of this part of it just here. Just, oh, oh, the silk, is, the silk is not bearing up well to that. The silk is not bearing up I'm well. I'm dying. Oh, no. I need to be warned. Oh, please. it's still talking. Oh, it's, God. It is um, the death throes. This is the last words uh, this thing will ever speak. Please. I'm sorry. You, you shouldn't have been so mean to everybody. That's why this has happened. I didn't understand. I could... Have made you great. I could, I could have done so much. And that's exactly what Tammy Duckworth said when I was going to join the cheer squad. And then she went and stabbed me in the back. I've had enough of the likes of you. And he angrily kind of stuffs it back in the package. I can't stand that. I can't stand that witch, Rain Cloud. I hope you get some, some revenge. So you have this dead fabric in your hand. Do you go to the fashion district? Absolutely. Because <laughs> it's just the fashion district. And this was just a weird box my friends are way too sensitive to. So I'm going to carry from now on. Insight checks, everyone. Olive is blissfully ignorant. <laughs> Do you see the eyes that are laid upon you? as soon as you enter the fashion district. Everyone has to make an insight check to even know that they are noticed. I, ro <laughs> I, ro I rolled a natural 20 plus one, so I already knew. <laughs> you wear sadness 
like the most beautiful wedding dress. With a natural 20, you see them see you, and you look at them right back. No one will look at tangible like a failure. You know, I, you know I have a real serious desire to buy some new clothes, though, right? Well, you're in the fashion district, baby. I presume we, 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 you changed back. I assume you changed back into your clothes and I'm wearing my magic kimono again. That's a 15. With a 15, you have a less emotional effect. You are, you know, you're a rogue. You're being watched. After adding six, it was ten. Olive, you're doing fine. All of these fashion people are jokes to you. You wear your battle sarong, and it functions, and it serves a purpose. That is what clothes do. Absolutely. And until they got holes in them, what's the problem? <laughs> I, I don't even know where to start with that. Ah, oh. Okay, so for example, this is, this is magical silk. If it were normal silk, one hole in it and that's it, it's done forever. It's magical silk, it'll heal itself. Um, okay, so you appear to be wearing some sort of a burlap, a very hard-wearing fabric. Um, and it really, I mean, it does contrast your wonderful lizard skin beautifully. I mean, it's, it's rough, it's, it's textured, there's, you're casting shadow, there's light. I love it. Just try to maybe just hold yourself a little more like, imagine you're hunting down a chick. They're watching you're the coolest, you tangible. You're the coolest lizard girl in the world while you're doing it. You're just stalking through the streets and all these, all these people staring at you. They're chickens right now. They're potentially your lunch. And you're a, <laughs> you're a tiger or a, well, I mean, you're a big lizard, but you, yes, you're, you're a snow leopard and you're stalking through the mountains. And They're watching you tangible. I think all those back straightens because that's like a good pep talk. That's right. All right. Tangible. They're watching I, you tangible. You need I, to I be love... high fashion. She, Raincloud is doing his level best to make her not this. I will say it one more time with all meaning. They're watching you tangible. I feel them watching me. Okay. I'm going to look at Olive, and I'm going to do what, what people who wear high fashion often do. Olive, you could dress nicer. I'm just saying. But then when I swamp dolphin, it'll get all covered in mud. Why would I dress nicer? I am going to take some of my thousand gold right now, and we are going to go into the nicest boutique. You all. And we are going to get you. You all know Enzo. Nice close. Enzo is a known figure to the fire breathing kittens. He is the one tailor that Tanager trusts. His shop is on this street. Do you pull away and bring her to Enzo's <laughs> shop? <laughs> I think I, I just want to say it's a moral imperative that we get you into some of Enzo's clothes. That's I'm not I'm just saying it's a moral <laughs> imperative. More important than even the fire breathing kittens. I it's just I just want you to know that fashion is not just fashion, it is the way of life and you should appreciate art. They're watching you tangible. <laughs> if Nesgrex was here, I know what he would say. He would say, why does everybody always try to put Olive in a dress? <laughs> I didn't no say a dress. I do have the gold I... backless ball gown that he gave me that one time that I didn't dress nice enough. So I like open up my backpack and it was all wrinkled in there, like stuffed together as a wad. And I take it out and it's all glittering. It's like a gold glittering backless ball gown. I'm like, you want me to wear this? I can wear this. Tangible and rain cloud. Is this the time for a ballroom dress? No. <laughs> no, it is not. They are wielding fashion like a cudgel. They know nothing of when and where a thing should be worn. I do not. <laughs> do you go into Enzo's shop? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I follow. Because I, I see the disapproving look at the gold backless ball gun. I'm like, all right, all right. I shove it back. Perception <laughs> checks from everyone. As Enzo... Uh, I, uh, uh, Rain Cloud does not go into Enzo's shop. Uh, Rain Cloud potentially owes Enzo a great deal of money um, and a garment of clothing, uh, which he <laughs> lost at um, 
uh, a very fancy party in the Feywild uh, in a place where time has no meaning. And he came out wearing what he's wearing now and isn't wearing that anymore. And the late fees are so high. And he's just been putting it off because he doesn't have any money. So he's going <laughs> to make his excuses. Uh, you know, I might um, go and have a look for a new hat. I'll leave you ladies to it. Enzo's marvelous. Uh, don't give him my regards or mention that you even know me <laughs> at all. It's a little... It's a little thing we do where we, we pretend we don't know Such each other. Such a tanager move. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, no, look, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be straight with you. I owe him a little bit of money, and uh, just don't mention me. And if he, mentions, if he mentions me, just say that I'm out of town on a mission, uh, presumed dead. <laughs> Why do you owe him money? I, look, I rented, with tanager, I rented out a garment, that wonderful blue kind of military epauletted thing I had and um, it was only meant to be for one weekend and I kind of held on to it um, oh it's very yes remember that outfit that outfit my main outfit yes the the Beatles outfit yes the the, the McCartney uh, the Sergeant Peppers the Sergeant Pepper that uh, was rented you wore that, that was, for like a year I know I'm he said firmly it was rented at the beginning. Like... Oh, I'm aware. Yeah. Olive is reacting. Oh, dude. Dudes. Dudes. Yeah, I'm, I'm... If I could, everyone give me a perception check. I understand you're outside, Rain Cloud. You might notice something. Uh, It's a ni 19. Is that 15 or is that 6? Okay. 15. I got a 15 on my roll. Olive? Total. Total. 12. Uh, rain cloud. What'd you get? I got a 19. Tangible. I got a 15. You, I have, you maybe have never met this person before. Something is wrong with them. Oh? They are deeply scared. The words that are said. Are you Olive? Are you Olive? I'm... No, I'm not Olive. I'm not Olive. He is looking directly... I don't know your name, but I cannot trust it. Oh. Are you Olive, or are you another falsehood? A tangible dream. This man is freaking out. Rain cloud. Olive checks for a package to tackle away from him. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Rain cloud. The fashion cops are coming. Literal fashion cops. Okay, well, what kind of... Literal fashion cops. Addressed in beautiful ass outfits with brass adornments. They look clean, even in these dirty streets. And you know, they're coming for you. They walk with absolute purpose, with no other direction than wherever the package is. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Who has... Uh, do, who has who, I'm holding the package still, am I? They're... I think Olive was because she was not affected by the curse and decided you all had been too affected. <laughs> the fashion cops are coming. Um, okay, what does... What does Rain Cloud know about the fashion cops? Oh, they're the op... They... The Reveler believes that we adorn ourselves in whatever is necessary. If it makes us feel beautiful, we put that on our bodies. The fashion cops have rules. They believe there is a right and wrong to fashion, which is entirely opposed to the reveler. They are still less dangerous than the Textilian church. As long as the Textilians do not know that this cloth is here, you're somewhat safe. But the fashion cops are coming for you. Okay, uh, is there some sort of... What, what kind of check do I want to roll to do... I don't know, you know when a, when a cat is just kind of showing off how kind of fancy it is, and it does like a little stretch, and it pushes its, <laughs> its arm down, and it does maybe a big yawn, and just kind of, oh, you know, just fabulousness. Insight, if you want to be the cat seeing the threat. Sleight of hand, if you want to just purely react. Religion or history, if you want to know something. You have... Um, 
Well, then it's just going to be sl- sleight of hand. I'm just going to cat flex. Make your check. I'm going to little kid. Oh, that's not good. That's a four plus a seven. Eleven. You're shot. You take four points of damage as a fashion cut. Shot. Pulls a pistol from their hip. Ugly. Wow. Okay. You're clipped. Okay. Am I rolling initiative here? Do I get to take a turn? What am I doing? We're going to roll initiative. I'm going to let the other two react. You heard a gunshot and a yelp of a cat. Because a gunshot is a very identifying location sort of sound, like I could probably tell who shot Rain Cloud, right? Yes, you could look through a window and know, you don't know the actual person, but you see the fashion cops walking down the street, and they are suffering no fools. Okay, so like, I know that it was them. Rain Cloud made a bad move. Yes, and they reacted. Okay, and how far away is the shooter from me? Uh, You would have to get out of a building. It may only be 15 feet, but it's effectively difficult terrain. It will take one full movement action to get out of the building, and then another full movement action to engage the combatants. I step of the wind so I can spend a key point to take the disengage or dash action as a bonus action on my turn. Damn. So I can bonus action to... So basically, like, I I move 45 feet, and then I move another 45 feet, and then I can... You are outside. You see okay. the smoking gun of the person who shot him. Yeah. Um. Freeze. Your outfit is disgusting. Don't make this worse than it has to be. Okay, so I still have my action, right? That was the free action of the combatant saying you're wearing an ugly outfit. So yes? Yes, you still have absolutely your movement. Okay, so here's the thing about Olive. It doesn't matter what that person said. I mean, unless they're going to do some psychic damage to me or something, because I only care about one thing. They shot my friend. So I'd like to go in and attack them. I mean, I if I don't have to use two movements to get to them, then I'd prefer to have my bonus action to hit them with more damage. But if I do have to use two movements to get to them, then I'll just hit them for my normal attack. So No, with Staff of the Wind, you're there. These are not firm combatants. I'm going to say cinematically... If you can break a 16 on your attack check, Olive is effectively ripping these fashion cops apart. Non-lethally. Well, non-lethally, of course. But wrecking ball, I think, is maybe the appropriate term. You are messing them up so hard. You, They were not ready for you. What'd you roll? <laughs> All right, my two attacks are... 15 and 26. Rain cloud, you watch Olive divorce herself from whatever she was doing. And she then becomes destruction incarnate. No one will die on all of these blows, but everyone will be hurt. Tangible. Olive has left the room. What are you doing? Well... You see a fearful tailor who cannot even agree on the person that they are seeing. They say, So you- Are are you Olive? I, I, I am not Olive, but I am shopping for Olive. I want to get something that's going to make her look- <laughs> Beautiful. You know what I'm saying? I want I want something that really I wanna I wanna I find I wanna find her something that's gonna make her look perfect. You know what I'm saying? Really accentuate what she's got and kinda, you know, no hold down what's not there, you know? Persuasion check, please. <laughs> sure, sure, I can do that. Uh my persuasion check came to 13, 14, 14. Who wears it? Olive. We create, so who is Olive? Can we even trust the person? They are all liars. I can't keep creating for liars. Are you, 
are they? Is, is she? Who? Where are they? And he's looking into nothingness. This man is having an episode. Hmm. I'm, I'm hearing that he's having an episode, and I'm gonna, um, uh, so, hmm, um, hmm, hmm, okay, all right, uh, well, crap, I don't, hmm. They're, they're out there, but who are they? I cannot create unless I trust the mannequin. Hmm. Who, where are they? They're people, beings, that are replacing us. How do I clothe a replacer? You have no idea what he's talking about, Tangible. No, but I'm experiencing uh, something I've experienced a couple times in this day, and I gain a moment of clarity, and I just simply... Uh, burn a fourth level. I can't believe I'm saying this out loud. I'm burning a fourth level spell slot to cast uh, the third level spell remove curse. <laughs> As I gently touch this man on the arm. Tangible, I will give you a perception check at advantage. Your spell does not find purchase. Okay. This man is not cursed. They are fear. Okay. Uh, well, I, I, the spell, just so you know, was at a 27 with the advantage. So whatever I learned, uh, you you can share it with me I, I if I have any insight Something from that. Something is uh -huh. happening. No magic has touched this man's brow. Whatever is making him afraid is non-magical. Something is happening, Tangible. Hmm. So, Tangible, I think you were reacting. Olive is currently ripping apart, in the most non-lethal <laughs> way, yeah. a group of fashion cops. Raincloud, you're seeing this scene happen. What's everybody doing? Well, I have a question, and it's what are the fashion cops wearing? What is their uniform? Ooh... And in, uh, sorry, sorry, who are they wearing? Ooh. Clean, blue, uh, side-breasted, like the buttons aren't down the middle, they're on one side. Uh, a little bit, honestly, like Raincloud's Sergeant Pepper's outfit. Like, uh, but it, it is the clean color of this fa of the fabric is what strikes you first. It might not be impressive, it not designer fashion, but they are wearing it to the nines. Deep blue, clean brass buttons, and w the reaction that you feel is absolute authority. This mm. outfit has been designed for authority. Okay, because my, my instinct was to try and um, catch them off guard by making fun of what they're wearing, or you know, a catty comment maybe. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't really sound like that's gonna that's gonna that's gonna do anything. Um, yeah, I don't know. I guess I'm drawing my rapier and uh, launching myself into the affray. I suppose that's what Raincloud would do. Tangible and olive. Well, I guess I'm going to go outside and see what's going on and why my friends are uh, fighting the fashion police. But something existential is going on, and I'm kind of worried. As you should be. Olive. I'm going to beat these fools. You have somebody by... You're grabbing them by the shirt, and your f monk fist is held like a cudgel, about to beat this person into unconsciousness. And the words that come out of their mouth, you look wrong. I bite their head like in Doro Hey Doro. <laughs> their entire skull fits inside my alligator mouth. <laughs> I absolutely have to roll a death check. There's no way you <laughs> munch a person and that does not incur a chance of death. Is Olive about to kill a man? 
I mean, in Doro Hey Doro, they usually just, like, hang out inside your mouth. Uh, well, they go to a separate space where it's all bad. But also, no, Doro Hey Doro, he kills every single person who goes in his mouth because they're never the man. <laughs> well, that's because he wants to, like, but... <laughs> no, he's looking for a... Per- We're not talking about Doro Hey Doro. <laughs> All right, uh, I mean, I would like to specify non-lethal damage, and if the DM wants to do their own thing, that's fine too, but this was not intended to be lethal. Oh, no, no, no. It is just like, if I roll a one, maybe Olive didn't have that amount of command. All right. I did not roll a one, he lives, it's fine. (laughs) Okay. But how's the talking going when you're inside my mouth? Hmm. <laughs> Playing a lizard folk can is you, awesome. Can you still talk when someone's inside no, your I mouth? Can't. Presumably, like a, a li- but a lizard wouldn't really use their lips to talk, would they? I mean, you're like you've got like an alligator head. That's yeah. not shaping your words. No, I, I don't. Though. I don't know. <laughs> How's the talking go when you're in my mouth? <laughs> you feel the hot breath in the back of your mouth. You don't know what this person is saying, but they're saying something. And you just hear or feel in the back of your mouth as you munch on this guy. That's so gross. (laughs) Okay, now I'm grossed out. (laughs) Bruh, you munch a dude. Yeah, it's a very picky eater in real life. Like, I don't want this. Um... (laughs) Well, it's done. We're not going to continue it. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> so i guess the thing that everyone kind of notices as you have all walked outside and down the main thoroughfare a group of militant fashion cops are walking out from an alley 70s disco style boogie boys it is polyester chest hair and musk walk out from the side. (laughs) Hey, uh, what's going on? And they're prodding and pushing the fashion cops. These are two groups that do not like each other. This is your out. Come on, don't tell me how to dress, my guy. You think you know good because you wear your little tight buttoned up nonsense? Oh, You're gonna say something to me, you mustachioed fool. You immediately become a non-issue. It is a dispute between the fashion cops and the boogie boys. What do you do? Slink away, slink away, slink away, slink away, slink away. (laughs) (laughs) Where does the package go? Oh, um, who's holding the package? Olive. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's Tangible doing? Tangible's going to cast Minor Illusion on Olive so it looks like she's wearing something nice. Ouch. Uh, I need a deception check from Tangible. For sure, I can do that. <laughs> you look at that. Okay, I know what that is. I know what that is. That is... 18. I was thinking maybe maybe a, fa- a fashion check is history, you know, to understand the history of fashion. Fashion is fashion. Olive, I understand that form is function and function is form. What would actually make Olive feel beautiful? Uh, so this is not an outfit. It's a, a fabric thing, but I'm going to go with thick, stiff fabric. Because it's smooth and she has scales and any curvy lady knows that a certain amount of smoothness is pleasing to the eye, especially over a little bit of bumpy bump. And like a, a stiff, thick fabric is where it's at. <laughs> Tangible beauty comes out of your fingers and as soon as it touches Olive, it turns to hard, coarse fabric. <laughs> that is what beauty is to them. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> Your... I just, 
I just want it to be in a Hugo Boss design with pinstripes, and I'm totally fine whatever the fabric looks like. It is a discussion if Olive looks good in pinstripes. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Olive, you are clothed in a different cloth. My friends have gone crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a person's head in my mouth and they're changing my clothes. <laughs> he just got shot. <laughs> Bruh, this is, this is what a level nine encounter looks like. You can't just keep throwing goblins at everyone. You have to go with the mind. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, can we can we get out of here? I have been shot. I wouldn't mind maybe dealing with that. These, I'm just I'm mainly worried about getting blood on my kimono. These disco-clad thugs are fighting the fashion cops, providing you an exit if you so choose. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to try and start moonwalking out of there, if that's even possible, on this surface. <laughs> like, yeah, disco. Good stuff, fellas. Come on, get there. Come on. Olive, tangible. Come on. Plit. I follow. I run after. I spit out the person's head. Gross. <laughs> and I follow. In pinstripes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for not murdering me. That was the most non-lethal bite I've ever had in my life. You are an absolute kindness, thank you. As you throw out this munched person who did not die, <laughs> and maybe will live a better life for this. <laughs> so, you three find yourselves in an alley. Olive, you hold this dying relic of something magical. You don't know where it goes. Tangible, you watched a tailor be broken. And Raincloud, why are you even here? I mean that not as a question, but as a true statement of the soul. Why are you here? There's a reason that all three of you have been brought here. And then, again, your eyes can't help but look at this dying bit of fabric. I mean, I get the strong feeling that we need to... We need to deliver this uh, tangible. I... Well, I, I, I agree with you 100%. I was wondering if we could just, like, take a 10-minute coffee break. I just want to recover a spell slot that I burned and, and see if we can, like, uh, regroup in ourselves. Here, here. Spill a bit of coffee on me, please. I would kill for a cup. You all see this outfit speak. Olive drops the box. I'm gonna go out on. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that was creepy. I'm just gonna say that was creepy. I want to. I want to be on a record that 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 of the things that have happened today. That's up there in the creepy. You hear? We, I think we can all agree upon that. Yes. I wonder. Should we? Hey. Um. So did, you said it's like it's a it's a is it a is it a what is this garment? The bathrobe or something? <laughs> uh. Could you make a history check, please? A history, okay. <laughs> or anyone can make a, a history check. Please break a 16. I'll see what 12. I can do. I want to talk to this thing. I did not break a 16. I got a 13. Olive? Also a 13. My history is very good. You, this is an outfit of someone. You don't know where or why it has appeared. But all of you know, with your middling checks, this was the last thing someone wore. These are death robes. <laughs> so, the question okay. is, who wears them next? I say, a magical robe. Hello, I am Raincloud Moonglow. Um, what is your name? I can vouch for him. He is Raincloud Moonglow, and I will vouch for him. Just saying. I am the truth. Okay. I am what you adorn yourself with. I am what you decide me to be. And then a pitiful cough emerges from this bit of fabric. It is dying. Tangible made sure this happened earlier when they removed curse on a cursed object. 
Was the curse bad? Or was it just simply a curse? Okay, maybe we can help you. Uh, it sounds like you're dying. What? Wear me. Wear me. Wait, what's... No, who, who... I need to be worn. Who, who, who is your ideal mannequin? The weaver. Who is the weaver? I don't know. I have no eyes. The person who wove you? The person who created you? No. The weaver, the one who continues to create. The there weaver. is only okay. one ab is clothes. What we choose I mean to put on our bodies, that is our choice, our absolute I need to be worn. Well, you know, it's nice to know your your place in the world. So you've got that going for you. None of us are going to wear you because you're very mean and nasty when we do. Let's is, is it Enzo? Is Enzo the weaver? I do not know names. Ugh, okay. I only know touch. When I am what, worn, I know I am worn. What did the weaver feel like against you? Creation. True creation. Yes, but no, I mean physically, I mean, are we talking skin, fur, scales? Or woodbark like me. Or woodbark, I'm sorry, woodbark. Love. Love. Mm. Very important. She feels like love. Okay, well, it's a female. I mean, that doesn't give us much. Should we speak? Should we ask Enzo? How is Enzo, actually? Enzo is freaking out because he has had a rough couple days. I'm going to go out on a limb and say Enzo is not in his right mind. Oh, dear. Is he... Is it because he's... Is it because he's... He's at his wit's end trying to find me <laughs> and re retrieve all the money I owe him? I... Don't think it had anything to do with you, and I'm speculating here, but I'm pretty sure there's something going on that's bigger than this robe and us at play here in the fashion district. Oh, dear. He sold one suit to three different men in the same day. How does that not drive you insane? Are you Olive? Who, even who you say you are? A frightful clarity. He has seen too many of the same person. Who's asking if someone's Olive? I'm confused. Uh, that is the uh, 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 Enzo. His his whole question was like, "Are you?" Because uh, Raincloud is dodging a debt, and I don't know if Tangible has ever bought clothes from him, but I know Olive interacted with him when he was hanging out with Tanninger in that previous session. So Yeah, so like he fitted me for clothes. I'm super confused because he knows who I am, so I thought that was a tell like when someone says the cops are after you, but like in a super secret way, because the cops didn't like my fashion. So I interpreted that to mean like Olive Hyde. Cause he's he's had uh you know that scene when someone's standing up on a pedestal and the tailor's like feeling all up and down their legs, like and and like getting their measurements. Like he knows me, <laughs> so so th hence the question. <laughs> he knows you. Are you Olive? I'm so confused. <laughs> Maybe Olive. Um, can I roll to see if Olive understands what's going on? Because the player doesn't. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. Uh, perception check. Okay, all is smarter than I am. Or investigation. <laughs> That's a natural 20. <laughs> he doesn't trust that you are who you say you are. The oh. question is, are you Olive? Are you the person inside your chest? He sees you, and he does not trust he sees. He's asking you very literally, are you Olive? Well, let me check. Looks at scale color. I'm not lime. I'm olive. Hey, they named us after our, our scale colors, so they could tell us apart. <laughs> you have That's to me. <laughs> Fashion is dying. The textilians, they come for us. They want us to be gray. We will not be made gray in 
you see he is speaking with like a little bit of emotion. He actually believes you are Olive. We will not be made gray, Olive. But they hide. They hide themselves in our own skin. They're there and no one sees it. He's talking like a crazy person. He's just talking nonsense. No one can live. Ah, uh, but this particular brand of crazy is something that Olive has experience with. Because Sitara died. And Sitara died to a shape changer. So... He is speaking of space with your nat 20. Yeah. He's talking about shape changers. That is why he doesn't trust they create a fabrication. He does not trust his own eyes. Hmm. I get where but you're coming from, because Nula Sag was a changeling for like three months there. Our guild leader. Yeah, and then when we figured that out, it was because Zatara died. Uh, because a changeling killed her. So I, I do get where you're coming from there, Enzo. And I pat you on the shoulder, and I, um, I, I guess... I don't currently have any policies in place for how to tell whether or not my friends are shape changers. So I look at them with like a raised alligator eyebrow and I think for a few seconds. It's the fashion. Rain Cloud is standing there and his, his, his hip flask is empty and he's kind of holding it up and looking up inside it when I closed. You can, you can tell it's him. We cannot hide our desires, our fashion, what we wrap ourselves with. That is the truth. And you see before he doesn't die, but he passes out oh, his no. last words. Fashion is truth. My opalescent beetle friend. And I catch his shiny white, yellow and blue and pink body as it crumples to the ground. Oh, that's right. Enzo Aristroop is an opalescent beetle man. Adorn yourself. Oh yeah, you've been talking to a bug this whole time. <laughs> Adorn yourself, Olive. Uh, I feel like at this at this point, Raincloud is is like peeking in the window to see what's going on, and if he notices uh, Enzo collapsing, he's gonna go in and and see what's up. Uh, yeah, I got confused because I thought we were in an alley. <laughs> so. uh, I thought we were in an alley as well, but then we started talking to Enzo. So I was like, "What? Yeah, all right." He's in an alley next to his shop. <laughs> oh, okay. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And he hasn't, he obviously hasn't recognized me. Uh, he does not have the ability to have recognition anymore. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Well, I've got, um, healing spells. Can I try and, like, revive him or, uh, do I have any healing spells? Well, this is a very interesting question. Wait, no, I don't. No, I've got lay on hands, though. Does yeah. a healing spell restore the soul? Um. When this man is having a bad day, does an actual healing spell fix that? Uh, maybe not. Here's something, though. Uh, my divine sense <laughs> as an action allows me to detect good and evil. Um, so maybe do I get any sort of uh, evil mojo coming off him or anything like that? Oh, you feel it's not coming from him. It's from the dis destruction of fashion people around you are deciding what's right and wrong and that's not what the reveler believes we live our mm. truth there is evil seeping out of everything in the fashion district okay and would rain cloud recognize that this is just the way the fashion district is i mean i think he's been there before uh or is this some different new type of evil or is it what or is it just his new connection with the reveler makes allows him to see it the third, your new connection okay. to the Reveler. Like, yes, yeah, you might have been here before, but this is the first yeah. time you see it. Okay. Well, my first thought is, like, this kimono is vintage, so I don't feel <laughs> guilty about that. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think we need to figure out who to deliver this to. I think we need to, like... I, I Can I lay on hands on Enzo just to make sure he's okay? <laughs> He is not in any sort of physical or medical danger. Okay, okay. Just can't <laughs> handle what he's visually seeing. He can't <laughs> handle the drama. He's just like, 
can handle He's the just truth. like Southern Lady fainted on a couch, basically. Yes, he has the vapors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, he has the vapors, okay. He does declare. <laughs> I do right. declare there's a moment in time where I cannot handle this. <laughs> <laughs> well... If I know one thing about Enzo, it's that he's always dependent upon the kindness of strangers. So let's bring him back into his his uh, his shop and like lay him in the recovery position. And maybe while doing so, Raincloud might steal a glance at his um his whatever you call it his record book of people who rent things, <laughs> and maybe deftly flick his claws back a couple of months um, to the time of that ball and just see what the entry for. Raincloud Moonglow says. Raincloud, do you erase your debt? You have the option uh, right now. While your what, tailor, what is, what is the gold gold pieces integer besides in the column beside my name? You owe him thirty gold. Thirty a gold. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Actually, probably with late fees, you owe him thirty four gold. <laughs> okay. Well, tell you what, I'm not going to do it while he's passed out. I'm just going to leave it for now. Isn't that how it always is when you have this library book and you're like, oh, I have to take this back to the library. I have to take it back to the library. I have to take it back to the library. And then you show up and they're like, two dollars. <laughs> you're like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I mean, this wasn't Tales of a Fourth Grade Nothing. This was like, uh, you know, a fancy, a fancy garment. Uh, well, that's, a, that's at least a weight off Rainclad's shoulders. I think he's going to probably be dr- drinking less now. You're getting the FBK rate, dude. Like, yeah, true enough. You're a fire breathing kitten. Some people hold respect for that name. Gives you a small discount on late fees. What about like non return ever fees? Like, surely that's more. It's gone. To buy the price of the item, it was 30 gold. If you recall that. Masquerade okay. Madness. Uh, I was the DM that episode, listeners, so that is why I'm talking right now. Sorry, everybody. And it is a 30 maximum, so that's that's why. Because you can just buy another outfit for 30. Oh. Okay. This is a wild one. Well, that could that could be an interesting quest someday, you know, to go and retrieve that from the Feywild. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, so I just, I, I got an observational question. Uh, it's real simple. How much debt are you cleaning up here, my friend? None. Zero. Okay. I, could, I can't. All right. Then I'm not going to put the same amount down uh, in his wallet to cover it. But I do want to say this. Yes, I have tricks in my pocket. I have things up my sleeve. But I am the opposite of a stage magician. He gives you illusion that has the appearance of truth. I give you truth. In the pleasant disguise of illusion. Am I still wearing your illusion clothes? <laughs> you are. You are absolutely like... <laughs> you are. I'm just making sure you are well aware of that. But those lines were from Tennessee Williams' Glass Menagerie. I'm just putting that out there. Uh... Oh, God. I knew I knew them. <laughs> uh, they're beautiful. I, uh... You should know them. What more is that but a simple adornment? You speak. These words come from the dying silk, which has somehow slowly been invigorated as you all quietly renew your faith in fashion. <laughs> I seriously want to double tap that thing so hard. You have no idea. <laughs> and I, I want to take that thing and I'm just curious. I want to touch it gently to Enzo's skin uh, as as a comfort, maybe just to brush it against his skin to see if it it brings him any comfort. It like a creeping moss begins to envelop where you touch it to him. Maybe this that was a bad idea. That needs to be worn. <laughs> that it might has have been one a bad idea. simple desire. Desire, wear me, and now yeah. you give him yeah. a mannequin. Yeah. So of course it will begin to be worn. Yeah. You know, maybe that was a bad idea. I'm just going to put it out there. I'm not going to couch it in any... It probably was a bad idea. Why? Why deny me this simple condolence? Give me a mannequin. Let me be worn. 
Are there any actual mannequins in here? I mean, I presume so. <laughs> That's a good yeah. question. Uh, what? The cloth would argue you are all nothing more than mannequins. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I know. My life has been reduced to mannequin. There's got to be like a stand-up figure in this room where people hang clothes occasionally, you know, like. Yes, you. Yes, there is a literal mannequin here. Do you put what a, what was ever in the package, the death robes of some long forgotten king, onto a mannequin? Raincloud, would you do the honors? I would be delighted. I'll, and I pull I'll, it out and whip it deftly. I'll assist you if you need it. I can help. I can help. Okay, well, it seems to be... You watch a plant grow without water. It is physically worn by this mannequin. It wraps in all the correct shapes. But there is no soul to sustain this magical item. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, so here's the plan. We find someone we really don't like. We're like... <laughs> <laughs> right? And then we give them this present. <laughs> yes. Maybe one of those fashion police, you know? We just... You hear you hear the fashion cops and the boogie boys having a full-on battle outside to have possession of this object. Are you going to give it to them? Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, they want this object. Oh, okay. Oh, yes. They want to rip this away from you. We sneak out the back, and we find the bishop of the Textilian Church, and we give him a present. What'd you guys say? Without a check, you know the Textilians are the worst. A capital idea. They will rip... You mean, you mean Raincloud? Or, or, oh, uh, what did I say? Did I say Tanager? You said Raincloud, I was just making sure. Raincloud, the Textilians take magic items rip them into thread, and then thread one thread of this object into everyone's clothes, because everyone gets a piece of the magic. Beauty means nothing to the Textilians. Form over function. Function over form. If the Textilians were to get this garment, no one would ever get to see it again. I mean, two minds, Olive. I think you've, that's a great idea, but I don't, I think even if we envelop the bit, this, one of these, um, textilians, they'll be able to remove the curse, get it off him, and then put it to some dastardly use. You know, it's no good giving them powerful magic. But I, I like, I like the, I, the train of thought you're on. <laughs> Maybe someone who thinks they look much better than they do, but no, we shouldn't punish people who are confident in how they look. I, this is, I don't know. Who needs a pretty dress? I do. I need a pretty dress. <laughs> you removed curse. You literally tried to kill this magical item. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I agree. Tangible, do you want to wear it? I don't know. I... Are you going to wear it, Tangible? <sighs> Would you adorn yourself with this sacred garment? Don't do it, Tangible. Don't listen to this thing. It's You guys are, are in an alley looking over a paper-packed piece of clothing that, for some reason, you're all afraid of. Hey, I'm going to put it on. Look. Oh, my God. Can you put it on? I need... Here we go. Why not? I mean, I'm wearing illusory pinstripes over it, so I won't get to know what I look like, but <laughs> I'll put it. I will drop I will drop that spell because it's a concentration spell. I will drop that spell the minute you adorn yourself with this. Alright, I put it on. I'd like it known that Olive has no gender externally, because y'all don't know about lizard folk. They know about themselves, but you can't tell. She doesn't have any boobs. Or any, like, anything to put it... It's a Ken doll. That's my body. It's a Ken doll. All right. This is a non-gendered outfit, just to make it clear. Like, this is just a death robe. And on those words, you're a king. You, you, as soon as this silk touches your body, you were a king. You commanded a nation. 
and then you got old, and then you died. And this is what they wrapped you in. But they still revere you. This was thousands of years ago. N your name is not known now, but your outfit exists. You are an echo of a king, Olive. You are adorned in regality. Does it, like, take over my mind? No. Well, no. does it? It's, huh? it's another thought in your head. You are both <laughs> Olive and this dead king. Does that take your mind over? I turn to Tangible and I say, Tangible, I am the once and future king, Tangible. <laughs> Freaking her out for no reason, like I got mind controlled, but I didn't. And I'm like, just kidding, it's me, Olive. Hey, what's up? Olive is literally glowing with white light. They are wearing oh. sacred garments. <laughs> how'd I look, Dan Tangible, how'd I look? <laughs> they look beautiful oh. true oh. beauty this has nothing to do with attraction or any sort of <laughs> sexual connotations they are exuding true comforting beauty so am i not allowed to go swamp dolphining anymore because <laughs> <laughs> i love swamp dolphining <laughs> that would be a grave crime against you but look at yourself my you're magnificent Olive, you are also a king. Would a king go swamp dolphin? <laughs> the king of the lizard folk? Yeah. There, there is no... You have absolute command over your body. I, re I remove no agency. You just, as you wear this outfit, have another thing in your head. A king. You are both Olive and this long-forgotten dead king. You... Is that evident to us? What what do we see? Uh, literally every pore of Olive's body is exuding white, glowing, <laughs> gooey, comforting light. <laughs> <laughs> gooey and comforting. <laughs> like a cinnamon roll. Mm. Yes. What a combination. A moist cinnamon roll. <laughs> Olive is a cinnamon roll right now. <laughs> So that's what you see. You watch Olive become more than what she ever was before. One has become two by a simple adornment. You look very pretty. I just want to put that out there. You look very pretty. Thank you. I, I totally don't care. Hey, voice, can you like do math for me? Because I'm not a big fan. So like... I'm not a math guy. <laughs> Darn! <laughs> I was hoping one of us was. <laughs> we have people beneath us to do our math. Ah. <laughs> Command them. You wear the regality. You hold command on your shoulders. Tell them. Make them yours. We are king. I throw my arms, like, one arm, left arm around my little tan tangibles, like, three feet tall, right arm around the six foot, what, like, seven feet tall rain cloud. Six nine, just go around the waist. It's easier. Just the waist. <laughs> just the waist. And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm doing, like, charades right now. Um, I'm, like, so, guys, yeah. the Textilian Church, they're really freaking Enzo out. And they're shape-changing, and they're taking over people's fashion, and they're ripping apart magic items. And you guys seem to like fashion, and those people fighting in the streets really do. How do you want to take down the Textilian Church and stop them from our poor Enzo, stop them from messing up our boy Enzo? And then to the robe I say, not command them, work with them. These are our friends, robe. Is that the way we rule? Yes. I agree. And I trust us. Yes. Also, you're going to learn long division, because I don't want to do that. Don't, don't take me off. <laughs> I understand that mannequins need to bathe, but please, I need to be worn. <laughs> All right. Okay. Fist bump, little bro. We're going to teach you long division. Keep going, everybody. Textilian <laughs> church. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm thinking maybe maybe hit them with some sort of fabricated scandal of some sort. I love it. Um, fabricated. 
Yes, yes. Maybe maybe spread a rumor that one of them was wearing socks with sandals. <laughs> or is that back is that back oh, in uh, this spring? Everyone in the entire fashion district barfs. <laughs> oh, I think I've just discovered a, a new uh, a new ability bestowed upon me by the great reveler. I can make everyone barf now. Please, fellow Wonderful. king, do not let them invoke the unholy words, socks and sandals. <laughs> um, um, mo- mom jeans with black slip on. Shoes, dress shoes. Oh, we're actually down with mom jeans. Just so you know, Olive, like, we are collective consciousness now. Two have become one. We're down with mom jeans. (laughs) Yeah, hey, Robe King, you can pick all the clothes, I don't care. (laughs) This reminds me... But you need to truly adorn yourself better. Is this... This reminds me of a song. Is this where I needed to go? I thought there was a little weaver, a mother with child that I was supposed to adorn, but is this where I lie? (laughs) Olive, Tangible did their best. I was promised a song. (laughs) Oh, oh, still do it. I was literally buying time. Tangible cast remove curse on this item. It did not kill it. This is not just a magic item. This is a relic. Socks and sandals are a no. We know this because they tell us so. We know mom jeans are so hot. You put them on and it's like a sunspot. Ah, it rhymed. I like it. (laughs) That's all I got. That's all I remember of that song. It was very funny. I liked it. Uh... Thank you. Thank you. I think we have to do exactly what was suggested. Uh, the question is, are you going to wear that on the way? Or are you going to take it back off? And then we're going we're gonna to put it in a box and carry it. You have to decide now. If I take it off, it's going to try to eat one of you guys and you don't handle it as well. So I'll transport like this by wearing it because the box transport method wasn't working out. So I'm just, just think of me as a box. Okay, I'm going to think of you as a box, but I'm going to keep covering that box with something that doesn't look like that robe because I have a feeling in the fashion world, people will recognize it. So I'm going to keep my minor illusion up over it so nobody sees it. Back to the pinstripes. Again, she is literally glowing. You look good in the pinstripes. What can I say? Yeah, you look good. Glowing pinstripes. Gooey white light is bleeding out of olive so you throw a cloak over her <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah we're right outside enzo's shop there's lots of bolts of fabric i'm like i'll take this the boogie boys are fighting tooth and nail with the fashion cops oh and i'm still carrying the package as a decoy a a where are you bringing this rain cloud you pick I, I mean, I, what is our plan? We're going to try and fuck, fuck up the church of, um, <laughs> what's it called? Fabricators. The Textilians. The Textilians. Sorry, I got it wrong. I got it wrong. Pardon my friend. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. How do, you, how do you come at a church? Are we just maybe going to burn their f- literal church? That seems a little, a little hate, a little hate crimey for the fiber of the kittens. Oh, yeah, no, we shouldn't. No. Welcome, Rain Glow, to being a reveler. How many times have you seen Tanager threaten to kill a god, burn a church? If someone is making someone else have a bad time, it is your religious duty to destroy anyone who is harshing another buzz. Maybe we could get them removed from the list of tax-exemptable properties so that the government taxes them. Yes, destroy them monetarily. <laughs> that, that would be cruel. I like that idea. I like that idea. But friends, friends, I have um, I've prayed on this for a small moment, and I think I have the answer. I think I know what the reveler would have me do. We need to organize the biggest barn dance slash rave that we can in their church tonight 
We need to immediately get flyers printed up, start organizing entertainment. Whether they like it or not, we are going to tear the roof off the place. If not figuratively, then literally. Are you with me? Rave, rave, rave. I got the funk. I got the funk. I didn't. Oh, I'm so down. Get those, get those minor illusions ready, Tangible. I need NPCs from all of you. Who's your homie? Like, they're not an adventurer. They are just simply your character's best friend. <laughs> Who do you call when there is a party tonight? It's fine if it's another character, but this is what I'm asking. Is like, hey, we need everyone to show up at this rave. Who does Olive call? So first, she calls Marlo and Remy, her roommates, that are never home, and they're not home. <laughs> so then she calls Tiffany Hapana, her former... She immediately answers. <laughs> High oh, that's the problem with you. You're always available. I mean, I love you, girl. <laughs> and... <laughs> I love you, too. What's going on? Are we hanging out? Rave tonight. Invite all your friends. Are we doing matchy-matchy? <sighs> We're wearing... Rope, what are we wearing? Justice. Duty. True beauty. We adorn ourselves... Blue! We're wearing Robin's Egg Blue! Oh, cool! We're wearing blue? <laughs> we wear light. We wear... What are you doing? You say blue? See you at the Church of the Textilian. It's at Peach. this address. Bye! Peach! Rafe, Rafe, Rafe. You have a firm discussion with your outfit afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you I, dropped the ball. I said what we're wearing. You... <laughs> I yelled peach at the end. We, I don't, I've never had to share a body for nearly a thousand years. It's weird. What do I, <laughs> what, can we just stare in a mirror for like an hour? Uh, and uh, you guys, who are you calling? <laughs> <laughs> that is the weird relationship you have with your new magic outfit. <laughs> <laughs> tangible who do you call there is an advent of a party I, and whenever I have the chance I call my best friend Claire Catherine Danes and she and I just love to hang out I think in a spare time she might be a spy but she's got three kids so it's hard to know but I love hanging out with her whenever I can and she's the first person I, I call on my list give me a moment and you hear her clearly kill somebody. She's doing spy shit right now, but she would never ignore your phone call. This is your bestie. Okay. Hey, what, what's going on, girl? Oh, it's a rave tonight. I was hoping you could come. You know, we could just hang out. Maybe you could leave the kids with the hubby, hubby and, oh. and we could have some fun, you know? I will be there. Yeah. You, there is nothing that can get me. I, I do have to ask. Are they going to be textilians? Oh, you know they are. Because I really... I... Uh, okay. Well, hey, baby girl. There's going to be blood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. This so your best friend, Claire, is absolutely going to show up. She's going to finish changing the entire political landscape of a kingdom. And then immediately jump to hang out with you. Okay. Rain Cloud, who do you call? Well, I don't think you can throw a rave in the fashion district without Tanage a good fellow. Uh, I, I, but I'm not sure exactly where he is. I mean, he's, I presume he's indisposed. Curry. Tanager's new body person. He's just hiding. He, um, he's is hiding. literally in our flower closet. Um, and he's been there for the past six hours. I can ask him to come out but i don't know if it's my place very well i don't want to put you in that position and um, my backup idea uh i'm not sure if i remember their names but the, uh, i there's this wonderful xenomorph couple that we met a while ago <laughs> and they've been complaining they've been complaining that they don't get any time you know to themselves anymore what with all the all the children olive you absolutely have to be ready to say a bunch of not Japanese. Oh, yeah. I'm looking up their last name. Basil yeah. and Jonah. <laughs> uh, so you call them? B Basil Jonah. and... 
Basil and Giona, yes, of course. And they were saying they've been, um, they've got a lot of children on, uh, uh, at the moment, uh, new, new, <laughs> newborns, uh, about seven, 700 of them, um, <laughs> which coincided weirdly with all these uh, chest bursting deaths in, in, in that town. I'm sure, I, I can't see how that would be linked. Anyway, the they might be up for a The chickens are wiped out. It was, it was rough. <laughs> Oh no, that is a shame. Well, all the more reason for them to come out and have, have and just party. I made a it while. so clear. Don't mess with the chickens, guys. <laughs> um, oh, Ursine. Her last name was Ursine. Basil and Giona Ursine. Yes, the Ursines. Weird name for something that's not some for some people who are not Ursine at uh, all. But rain E-R- cloud. S I. You put in the rune to the Got speaking it. stone. How do they respond? Oh, if this is you. Oh. I don't know Japanese. Moshi Moshi. Um, yes, Moshi Moshi. Um, I just realized that I don't think we speak any of the same languages. <laughs> There's a rave tonight in Nikamui in the, in the, um, we're, we're, we're doing a special reveler event at the, uh, the, the church of the, what are they called again? Uh, you guys don't like the Textilians. The Textilians, yes. Church of the Textilians, it's a takeover. It's textile plus Ilian. <laughs> yes, I remember now. I remember. I have, I've been drinking all morning. I should remind <laughs> you. Um, yes, uh, 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 come on down. In the meantime, although they can't speak it, they've gotten better at understanding common. So you hear like 700 screaming and fighting kids in the background. And Basil says to Giona, Party ni ikimashou ka? <laughs> and Jonas like, oh, hell yes, but in Japanese. Which I don't know how to say. They only taught me polite Japanese. And then... <laughs> I think she says the words hell yes. I think she says the words hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> hi! <laughs> I think I heard a... I think I heard a hi. I think I heard hi. I think that means yes. Uh, the gnashing cadre of these carapiced children will be fine for a couple hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll throw like another couple dozen chickens in the room, close the door, and be like, bye. It literally just sounds like a rock tumbler full of meat. <laughs> cool. So, um. Dissolving meat. I'm imagining a rock tumbler full of meat. I'm just, that imagery is sticking in my head. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, that's what they sound like. Super loud. All rock tumblers are super loud. As you guys prep for the party, putting out cups, putting up adornments for the room, Olive hears their outfit speaking to them again. Who are we? Why do you wear me? Hello, I'm Olive Mudo. I am a adventurer with the fire breathing kittens, and I'm a level eight monk. I wear this magical king robe, and I traffic it because i'm not i I escort it i'm an escort of this magical king robe and i take it wherever it wants to go where do you want to go king robe dude no i am yours i am binding myself to your flesh as we are speaking i should (laughs) you guys watch as like (laughs) olive shakes away this magical item but every thread is trying to grab against her flesh. No, no, what? I I could be prettier. And then it is removed from you. Oh, you can stay for now. You're fine. It's okay. It you have clings such... to you. Yeah. Oh, it, oh, I pat my, um, I raise my left arm and I like pat my wrist. I'm like, there, there. It's okay. You have abandonment issues. We're going to have to <laughs> talk about things. <laughs> he died. <laughs> Someone did try to kill you. He died. I'm a death robe. Just like Tammy Duckworth. She had abandonment issues too. Are you are you going to die? Am I going to have to feel death again? Well, yeah, so kiddo, it happens to us all. And no. one <laughs> I'm a robe, dude. Okay. I shouldn't have to process death. I'm a cloth. <laughs> Well, it's it's very far away. Don't you worry. And I'm just going to pour a little sleeping potion. I'm going to visit a little shop. Pour a little sleeping potion on my left wrist. See if that does anything for no particular reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, you dose your outfit 
<laughs> it's okay. It's, it's like this ambient. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you remove yourself for a moment from this magical item, and you can speak to your party members. Oh, no, I'm going to with... leave it on. It's, I don't care. It's got oh, abandonment it's... issues, so I'm not going to abandon it. <laughs> It's hanging like a wet rag around your body. Like, it's... You know when somebody gets too drunk and they're hanging on another person? <laughs> that is what your clothes are doing to you. <laughs> there, there. It's okay. I think I think I can cure that. I can lay on hands and... Is your robe hung over? <laughs> Have you heard the good news, robe? <laughs> Now that I think of it, I can probably I can probably lay on hands and cue, uh, cure drunkenness. Hang on a second. Okay, Ranklade wants to lay on hands on himself and see if it can sober him up. Uh, I'm going to try and add a hit point to myself from my pool. Uh, you can do that. The magical healing and the I natural can... paladins. Paladins always resist poisons, toxins, disease. It's always been kind of an in-joke. That includes alcohol. So paladins quite so literally just... have a religious devotion against being drunk. You can take much wait, wait. more than a normal person could. Okay, but my your question body rejects disease. My question is, can I still will myself sober? Uh yes, that's Magically. it's an easy thing to do for you. Okay, and then my next question is, does that feel really horrible <laughs> or really good? Because it's gotta be one of them. Was this in service of yourself or the revel? Um, it was me exploring the revel. A little of both, to be so honest. So long as we protect the revel, you are made sacred. You made no wrong actions. Sweet. That felt good. Guys, have you heard the new good news? I can also sober you up in an instant, and it feels pretty good. I feel like I might be able to make more money out of this than from delivering cursed robes <laughs> to people... <laughs> unaddressed to anyone there is still somebody who did not have a package delivered today <laughs> maybe they'll hear about the rave yeah uh, and it's walking towards them if they can join the party joining us today was tangible hey you all olive see you in part two and our baby boy moon cloud Wow. Brain cloud, moon glow. <laughs> Dang it! I quite like moon. I quite like moon cloud. Actually, <laughs> let's let's go with that. You can call me moon cloud. I'm going for a cat and nap. It would like to do us the kindness of giving us a five star review and comment. You can do that. Whatever your preferred method of listening to our podcast is, leave us a review. <laughs> On iTunes, please. <laughs> I mean, of course, that's the preferred, but... We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Fire Breathing Kittens podcast. Please leave us a review on iTunes.com. You can subscribe to receive new episodes through your podcast player or by visiting firebreathingkittenspodcast.com or finding us on YouTube. Can you think of someone who might enjoy this podcast? Please, share it with them. We don't pay to advertise this show, so the only way we can grow is through the support of listeners like you. Thank you! You can find more adventures on Amazon.com in the bookstore, Fire Breathing Kittens, all one word, podcast. That's right, you can curl up with a good book based on one of our podcast episodes. The authors do a really great job of adapting them into fun novels. We also have official merchandise on redbubble.com. Yes, that's right, you really can own a notepad with the Fire Breathing Kitten logo on the front. Or one of your favorite characters. Welcome back to the Fire Breathing Kittens. We are once again joined by, and I will ask them, please make sure to include your outfits at the current moment. <laughs> Raincloud Moonglow. Hi, I'm Raincloud Moonglow, or uh, Mooncloud, 
Uh, that's kind of my like party rave name. <laughs> and tonight at the rave, I will be wearing well, just what I always wear: my beautiful, magical, uh, baby blue kimono with floral patterns on it. Um, I may have a couple of glow sticks on hand, and I'll just be kind of monitoring the party, making sure everyone's having a good time, people are getting to know each other, and there's just a good vibe going on. And you also are a lithe cat man of recognizable height, correct? Oh yes. Okay. So we move away from our kimono draped cat man to potentially the most beautiful woman in the fire breathing kittens. Who am I talking about? Is it Olive? Tangible, of course. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was thinking I was thinking that must be Olive. <laughs> I was like with her long flowing hair, mm-hmm. it's gotta be tangible. Well, if it's me, I'm very flattered. That's a very kind thing to say. Uh, hi, welcome back. I am currently wearing an, a beautiful green Diane von Furstenberg and a Louis Vuitton uh, twist and twisty handbag. If you're familiar with it, you know what I'm talking about. It's gorgeous. Uh, but that's what I'm wearing right now. And was it the woman I was talking about? Who is the most beautiful? Olive. I mean, Olive is currently stalking a stray cat, which is what it looks like she's doing. But internally, she's telling the cloak, one divided by nine is 0.1 repeating. Two divided by nine is 0.2 repeating. If you practice this enough, you're going to do all the division for us. I don't understand. No, (laughs) say it again. Start at the beginning. Any number over nine in the denominator is that number repeating. Isn't that a quick, easy? No, but what is a number? Oh, okay, ready? One dead cat that I'm going to kill. Two cats for dinner. Three tasty, Over. delicious kitties. Uh, Olive, Olive, could you, I, I've asked before, can you make it, could you just say dogs instead? Just out loud, inside you can say cats, but please, for me, it's, Olive I get very scared. Is explaining. Look at my tail right now, look at my tail. It's bristled up. Uh, I would absolutely eat stray dogs. Packs of stray dogs kill people. It's ethical for us to remove them from the streets. I know, and they, they smell, they don't clean themselves, and they're always, they're so needy. Ugh. Oh, you have to clean me. I need to be washed by no less than four hands. I got two. <laughs> Alright, ready? One paw. Two paw. Wash, wash, wash. So I'm teaching the cloak math. Wait, we're wearing paws? I have paws. Your body, or sorry, your cloak is just now understanding what your body looks like. (laughs) Wait, we have paws? (laughs) Oh, this mouth. We have a a tail? Uh, Tangible and Rain Cloud watch as this form-fitting magical cloak changes shape, creating a slot for a tail. Oh, that's so much more comfortable. This tail is as long as, like, the rest of my body, so... (laughs) Whew. You keep talking about these glyphs. These new Mars. Please, speak of me of your body. What form do we wear? I think I'm gonna take you swimming. (laughs) People are beginning to show up. Oh, I don't know if I should get wet. (laughs) People are showing up to the party now. Okay. These are inconsequentials. They showed up to the party on time. Like a fool. You never. But you know one truth. One truth here is people are not so dreadful when you know them. Are we people? (laughs) Uh, Anyone can react. Uh, Olive, you're kind of talking to your clothes. Yeah, like in my head. Right? There's two of me up in there. Uh, there's one of you. Two have become one. Do not look for the division. You're now two. Okay. And one. All right. Parallel minds. So we've got body me. (laughs) If you've seen So I'm a Spider, So What? I've been very much channeling the parallel minds. (laughs) All right. What's going on? Are we in a church? Are we directing a large number of people into a church? Uh, okay. So, I should have addressed this previously. There is no building for the Textilian Church. Because they believe in the absolute opposite of fashion. 
you should adorn yourself in only what is functional. And beauty is not functional. Wear gray, wear simple, hard-feeling cloths. We don't need a church. We need nothing. We only need something to provide a barrier against cold and wet. That being said, Tanager did recently buy a luxury mansion that he still spends every night at the Fire Breathing Kittens Guild Hall. He just bought a thing for people to party at. So, where do you hold your rave? Our last scene was set in the alleyway next to a tailor shop. Well, the whole point of choosing their church um, was, yeah, to just act in in service of the reveler and in direct opposition to the textilians, you know, to two birds at one stone. So, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what Rain Cloud knows about the textilians, but he's going to try and, like, just jam a finger in her eye, uh, so to speak. Yeah, let's find out where they live. No, no, no. Metaphorical finger in the eye, not an actual. Oh, let's still find out where they live and party there. Could you make a religion check, please, Rain Cloud? Yeah, yeah. Let's party. Oh, God. I mean, okay. I've got an appeal to the DM here. So religion is, you know, a thing in D&D, but we're not that kind of religion. I feel like, you know, when you're a worshiper of the Reveler, you can probably swap out religion checks for, like, maybe charisma or any sort of charisma-based skill. I I miss uh, the 3.5 diplomacy check. I wish you could, like, a neutral charisma. Actually, no. Diplomacy, please. Or, or performance. Diplomacy, okay. Oh, performance. Yeah. Same bonus. Uh, performance time. Ooh. That's an 8 plus 3. That's an 11. Uh, rain cloud begins spiraling. <laughs> it is an attempt to dance, to feel the revel. This is not the time nor place. But there's something there. You did break a ten. Color. That is how to jam the thumb in the eye. I'm maybe a parade of some sort. I'm, I'm not really the organizing type. I'm more the kind of schmoozing, making sure everyone's having a good time type. I mean, like, if we did have a festival of color, like, what... You know, some cultures throw colorful powder in the air and at each other, and we made everything in the town colorful. And like we had a special on on paint half off on like garish colors of paints for your houses. We believe in this. Adorn not only us, body, but the entire town my, should be made beautiful. Is that my clothes talking? Oh, yes, agreeing with your idea. <laughs> You're okay with people throwing powder dust at you? Make us more beautiful. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to subsidize the purchase of paint. Yeah. Organize a festival to paint your house while throwing color at your friends. Uh, Tanninger, Tanninger had a spare 400 gold. He left it just on his nightstand. You can just go grab Tanager's money and finance this part, this citywide party you're talking about. I, I, I absolutely love this idea. Um, uh, Rainclad looks to Tangible and is like, Tangible, you look like you've got a couple <laughs> of ideas. Well, I, I got some ideas. Uh, for one, I'm going to address the dress directly. And I'm going to walk over and pretend I'm talking to Olive, but I'm really talking to the dress. And I think, you know, I think you think of yourself as having the only problems in the world, as being the only one who's disappointed. But if you look around at the whole world, all the people around you, there's lots of people that are disappointed as you are. What makes you so special that you get to make other people disappointed and then expect them to be as disappointed as you? I got a plan for you. I want you to watch this. At which point... She points her fingers up into the air in a fan-like motion and casts color spray and just makes a beautiful array and pattern of colors in the air in front of the dress. Oh, absolutely. 
this dress rips apart. Tangible. Nice. What is your new adornment? <laughs> oh my! I, I gotta give up my von Fersten bag. <laughs> it sees you. You. It agrees with you fully and completely. They are limited in one person's body. They need to be two. Two becomes one. Three becomes two. And two becomes one. Connect everyone. Are we, we were both wearing it? I thought it jumped ship because it didn't want to learn math. <laughs> <laughs> no. A b- it's fabric. You, uh, it, it's a rule of fashion. Remove one thing. I've got a rule of my own against replicants. <laughs> uh, this is, it is not a replication. It's merely a swath of fabric changes what your dress looks like and becomes a small adornment on tangible. So you do like the reptilian people who are trying to put one one thread from a piece of fabric in everyone's clothes. You really have the same goal. You know, I think this is a lesson on togetherness and how we're not as different as we think we are. They would rip me apart, turn me into base textiles. I am still myself. And now I adorn another. Yes, you speak truth. I could be ripped apart, but would I really be the same outfit at the end? Or could I just give this beautiful woman a show? Be a part of her? Tomato, tomato. Hey, Tangible, you like your color dress? I do like it, but I think I need a brooch. Hey, all right, so let's get you a brooch as we go painting. I got 400 gold. <laughs> Spend it. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, everyone goes up to Tanager's bedroom and just scoops a bunch of loose coin off his nightstand. I feel like he would want me to have this. I think my brooch needs to be made of glass, like a little adornment, maybe of like, uh, I, I think it should be of a cat, like a little glass cat ornament. Your outfit would ask, have no chain? Let me be the fabric that brines your brooch to your neck. This seems fair. So, you lose roughly, like, six inches of fabric from your dress, as that six inch in of, uh, inches of fabric flies across the open air, wraps themselves around Tangible's neck, and binds their brooch in place. You now have a magic item, Tangible. I'm sorry, can I clarify the language there? Does Tangible have an item, or does Olive now have an item? I'm, am I ten, <laughs> am I Olive's item? I, I, that language was very confusing to me. I was just about to ask in my mind, hey, hey, Tangible, can you hear me? This is a set of magical items. Olive originally wore the full set, now you are wearing another piece of this set. So, yes, the overall magical effect has been diminished. It is still, you're just, you pulled the gloves off a set of armor, so to speak. But this is more beautiful. It does not deal in gloves or chest pieces. This is something meant to impress people. And now... It's a bit of you. You can it's, hear each other. It is very strange to me, Olive, that I can hear you, but I do want to say how beautiful it is and how easily this dress seems that it can be broken, like it's made of glass. It is struggling and actively becoming not just a magical item, but an actual thinking magical item. I don't know if I like things that are hard glass. These words seem wrong. It should be more comforting. We could bind them. I am binding them. I got this glass right around my neck, bud. Come on, what are you doing? New, new fabric. 
You speak with such purpose. Come on, calm down. You see this magical item is taking your personality traits. They, it is not a, you're not talking to each other. You're talking to each other through these items. Are you mocking me? Are you mocking me? Olive, are you mocking me? Are they mocking me? I mean, Olive at this point has wandered away. <laughs> She's over by a rain cloud. <laughs> Your clothes are still arguing. <laughs> yeah. I, hey, clothes are going to clothe. <laughs> so, rain cloud, how's the paint bulk purchase going? I mean, yeah, I, I've I've been passed from one guy to another guy to some woman. Yeah, I think we can get... I just... It, I don't know how much paint we need. I mean, we're trying to organize a festival on the day. I'm... I, I'll be honest, I have vague, vague concerns that maybe this won't be perceived specifically uh, by the Textilians as an attack on them. I, I think the message is maybe a little vague. That's what I'm trying to say. But look, I'm throwing myself into the task. Um, I have had a few more drinks, but if that starts to impede things, I'll just <laughs> lay on hands. What's what, what what what's your vibe? Uh, the person you've been pushed onto is a goblin woman named Big Fork. Name so because she uses a big fork as a weapon. <laughs> it is effectively a trident, but it's just a big fork. And she is like, I heard you're trying to make a new holiday. Yes, and we're trying to do it, like, right now. Um, do you like to, you know, have fun and cavort and yeah, just, you know... I would be here if I didn't worship the Reveler. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ugh. Oh, you're a, you're a uh, worshiper of the Reveler. Same as myself. Yes, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a paladin at level three. Does that make you a Revelian? Oh, that's a new one. I like that. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It absolutely does. You speak it and it becomes true. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get a party going and we're also trying to kind of stick it to the Textilians. Ideally in a very direct way, but if it's just a kind of a, in a conceptual kind of the spirit of the whole vibe, that's also fine. Well, the way I understand it is... Um, that one, in motions to Olive, who's standing away, or I guess they were speaking to Raincloud. Um, they want this one, right? They want to rip this outfit up and just bring it down to fabric. As long as uh, this is the center point, seems like that's enough of the finger in an eye, I think. Just to, to, to simply be enjoying oneself in an unbridled fashion while wearing this garment. The garment is the revel, my guy. We live such terrifyingly small lives. The only way we find comfort and the ability to revel is by adorning ourselves. This outfit is a testament to that. And I'm going to let you know right now, I will not be s letting it become fabric. This is an outfit. Okay, all right. I pick up some yellow paint, and I slowly... I'd like to stealth roll behind the goblin. Please roll. Fourteen. You pass. I hold the yellow pigment powder above the goblin, and I make it snow. They immediately begin the revel. True joy overcomes this goblin. And they dance around in the patter, they throw it back at you. Snowball fight! And within, within moments, the new holiday, color day, begins. <laughs> yeah! Please, describe the day. All over the town, there's these stalls, and they look kind of like folding tables with piles of powder on them, but don't be fooled. That's the party, because you can just go up to these stalls and pick up this powder and throw it at people, and it's like a snowball fight, but with fistfuls of red and blue and yellow and green, and paint's half off. 
paint your house. <laughs> and then tangible added. That memory takes a lot of poetic license. It omits some details and others are exaggerated according to the emotional value of the article it touches. For memory is seated predominantly in the heart. And as we remember this day, this special color holiday, all our lives will be changed forever because our memory will put it in the front. Hey, put it on him. Let him remember with color. Throw this pigment. <laughs> and then Rain Cloud added... I'm just really enjoying jumping off walls and throwing paintballs at people. This is, kind of feels like I found my calling in a way. This is amazing. You watch as the fashion cops, the boogie boys, even the textilians Ooh. are painted with color. Yay! Do they pick up some powder themselves? The boogie boys and the fashion cops do. But you see... You are putting the thumb in the eye. The textilians reject what you're doing. This is an affront. How dare you wear color? This pigment could be used for something else? They don't even know what they think in this moment, because the pure passion and beauty of what you're creating? You've made a new holiday. Forever in Nicomoy. Thursday morning... In the month of fresh snow, will be color day. There still is the quest of it all. Are you going to deliver the outfit, or are you going to wear it? So if you take three and you divide it by nine, it's point three repeating. And if you take four and you divide it by nine, it's point four repeating. Hey, excuse me, Olive, Ooh. Olive, I, I think that's technically a party foul we're, we're at a festival and you start talking about mathematics and differentials i think that's sort of illegal i don't know whose jurisdiction is the fashion police it might be my jurisdiction obviously i'll go easy on you but i'm just fair warning fair warning are you suggesting that this outfit might not be having the most fun with me and that it might want to go elsewhere i mean if you're having fun that's what it's all about but i'm just saying you know maybe out loud less calculations <laughs> outfit do you want to stay with me and I'll teach you all about how to do long division for me so I don't have to? Or do you want to go to someone else? Did you have someone else in mind? I don't mind delivering you. I can walk. See, these are paws on the feet. We call them feet. Paws on the bottom. Two. I had a radically different idea. I'm just going to put it out there into the universe because I imagine Olive that every year on color day, the dress gets taken out of its box and one person who's been elected oh, will damn. wear the fabric of the dress for the day, making them the king or queen of color of that day. Oh, and damn. then at the end of the day at midnight, as if a charm has been lifted, the dress goes back into the box and back into some dark, deep bank vault where it lives quietly until the next color day. You know there is truth in your statement, and there is only one thing this dress has asked, and that is to be worn. Let them be seen. And also, secondarily, uh, the dress takes on aspects of the personality of the person who's wearing it. So, yeah, your dress absolutely wants to keep hanging out with Olive, and they are beginning to understand what numbers are. When you talk of division, they're like, oh, yes, like when I, when I made myself a little bit smaller and I gave that part away, that was division. Hey. They still can't conceptualize what a number is. But they understand the idea of division. So, Olive, I mean, yeah. I mean, if everyone takes the dress off, you no longer are attuning yourself. But at the same time, no, this dress wants to be worn by you. And I'm talking to both of you at the same time. By you and somebody else with you. 
Boop, boop. <laughs> so, what happens? Do you take the dress off? I can't take a beautiful thing off. I just can't do it. It, it, it is pretty, and I'm going to just keep it on. And I guess uh, color day will be color day, and I'll just wear the dress on color day. I will be the queen. Well, you get to be the queen. You, you just, you can deal with this next year. Ah, uh, she's such a beautiful queen. Catch, and I throw the king mm-hmm. outfit at you, and I'm like, quick, illusion me, I'm Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> Whiz! You are illusioned. It's all good. You're fine. For a moment, Olive is naked, but the dress sees that out an illusion. So for a moment, Olive is clothed in just like a simple white dressing gown. <laughs> That's okay. Again, everybody, listeners, she's a bipedal crocodile. So <laughs> a fat one. <laughs> listeners, it's still allowed to be very hot. It's, it's really oh, not. It was very hot, but the fabric is very thick and hot. <laughs> okay. Oh, fun. All right. So, uh, do you put on the rest of the outfit? Of course I do. Of course I do. It was nice meeting you. Bye. Of course I do. Currently taking applications for a parallel mind willing to do long division for me. (laughs) (laughs) So, before, this was a dressing gown of a dead king. Mm. Now, for a moment, it was worn... By a lizard monk who spoke of math and battle and uh, body dysmorphia. (laughs) This dressing gown now has two parts to it, and you wear it. You see the entirety of what Olive was feeling while wearing this dress. And you also see the death of a king. Two minds three minds, three becomes two, becomes one, becomes nothing, are joined with you. And maybe you have a moment when all this floods over you, and you look at Olive, and you actually see and can feel what they felt for just a few hours. Ooh. You know, time's the longest distance between two places, so I wonder if it's possible, but I'm going to try to imagine... Uh, if I can see into the king's mind who used to wear this dressing gown and see if I can see any of his secrets that might lead to a future adventure. (laughs) I've been betrayed. Oh. He would never kill me. Oh. Someone had to have been wearing his flesh. There are falsehoods in this world. And then he dies. A simple wound placed in the wrong position caused a great man to go away. You feel the last moments as his most sacred attendants maybe one of them a betrayer. Wrap this same cloth that you wear yourself in now or a death cloak. I think this was the king's death cloak after he was murdered. I think the past returns into an everlasting regret if we let it. That's... Today is a day of beauty, my guy. Come on, stop. Don't don't look backward. Let's look forward. It's color day. Do I get a very clear picture who the king was and where he lived? Uh, long forgotten. Would you like to make a history check to attempt to remember? Long forgotten. Yes, I would like to make a... Yes, I do. Uh, and I rolled a 20. A dirty 20. Dirty stinking 20. This was not a king who held a castle. He waged no wars. A small king. And it makes sense why he would be forgotten. Fashion police are here. Hmm. Hmm. To the east, where Marigold's Bloom Kingdom. It has no name, because it doesn't need one. He was a king of nature and someone some being perverse but years ago it was a sylvan grove hmm 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 so uh uh rain cloud 
is looking around to see if Basil and Giona have arrived at the at the inaugural <laughs> Colors Festival. Our two Xenomorph friends. They could not get less than two dozen of their children to stop following them. <laughs> Giona show up with a cadre of chitinous clacking <laughs> of this rave. Um, <laughs> okay, all the better, all the better, because Rain Cloud has an idea. He's chatting to them, and, you know, he can understand them, but they can understand him a bit, and he's just kind of like, he's really having a great time at the party, and he's just kind of like, um, if you can imagine a, a, a xenomorph with hostage face, even though they don't really have very expressive faces, he's kind of got his arm around both of them. He's like, I love you guys. You're so great. Remember your wedding. That was amazing. You're so in love. Look at how many children you have. You know what you should do. Hey, hey, you know what we should do? I'm I'm a paladin now. As far as I'm aware, I can marry people. You should renew your vows. Let's renew your vows. Come on. And he, he wants to try and like remarry, remarry them. Basil looks with absolute effort and it is so hard for him taps you a few too many times a bit too hard on the chest with his friend friend tomodachi yes nakama i don't know how to say it in japanese but he says to giona we need to start speaking their words Ego o hanaseru koto wa ikanakte wa ikimasen. He says we can do it. Dekiru! Friend! Well, that's a, that's a great start. Gioma, if I may, I think this is the perfect time for you and I to slip off into another room, and I am going to give you the perfect wedding dress and choka for this event. You're going to look so spectacular, it's going to blow your mind. She doesn't speak the words, but she knows you're talking about adornments. And immediately is like, yes, girl. Rain, Cloud, and Olive, you're left with the bridegroom. Like I said, really, really, uh, uh, great inaugural festival. I mean, we, we vote, we, this was three hours ago we started planning this. And then we met, we met, we met Big Fork, another reveler, and you know this is uh, yeah, I, this is a good party town. There's some good people in Nikamu, you know. When it comes down to it, you can rely on your your fellow your fellow Nikamuian. That's what I always say. As you're saying this, heavy thwaps of palmfuls of colored dust hit against the windows in your room. The entire town is embracing your new holiday. Thwap. <laughs> thwap. Thwap. Color streaks the outside. You are painting the town. Uh, uh s scary. And he points at himself. Basil does? No, 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 no. You're beautiful. You just need a little color. And I like whap him with like a, a pastel blue and a pink at the same time. He only knows about six words in common. <laughs> and one of them was like, he, can you make an insight check? Yeah. Uh, tangible doesn't have a um, language spell. Tangible is in a different room getting the, the, the okay. bride ready. I got a 10 insight. One of the words he decided to learn was scary. You don't know entirely why he learned that, but... That is one of the few things he knows how to say. Quick question. Which, you know the way the xenomorphs kind of have a mouth and then like a little stalk with another little mouth on it. Which <laughs> mouth said it? Which mouth do they speak common with? Uh, the way I'm going to say xenomorphs talk is they're like, you know how like in a human, their vocal cords are like in their neck. Mm hmm. The second internal mouth is functioning as vocal cords. So he's just, like, sending wind over, like, a f I'm sorry, flesh flute. <laughs> and it, it is roughly <laughs> able to approximate common language. Okay. They're able to, when they speak their natural language, it comes from the chest. He is relearning how to talk from the mouth. 
Well, look, I saw these two get married um, in common without understanding a single word, and it was beautiful. So I'm not perturbed by that. I'm looking forward to flexing my new divine muscles, bringing these two together. To be honest, this is mainly for rain clouds good, but, you know, I feel like uh, they're both going to have a good time. Uh, Giona presumably is going to look great in her dress, and uh, I think it's going to be a nice way to to cap off the inaugural Colors Day in Nikamui. Tangible. Describe our bride. She looks lovely. Her natural colors are kind of cascading into the dress. And then there's this shimmering quality to it that is is simultaneously a measure of the fabric's ability to adjust and change in the moment because it is magical and it can do this thing. To capture the light, to always radiate back onto this beautiful creature to make her look more beautiful every second you look at her. It is almost crying. And not out of sadness, out of true beauty. This dress is making a xenomorph look attractive. (laughs) Uh, Basil sees her. And in his own insectoid way, is overcome with the beauty of his wife, which is something that every husband does. He sees every husband who's looking at her is having the same reaction and overcome with her beauty. That sounds bad. (laughs) No, the idea of every husband looks down the wedding aisle and sees their wife and is like, you are the most beautiful thing in the <laughs> Tanager isn't here. <laughs> but this guy actually loves this person and does not run. Just Aww. loves them. Aww. Every Aww. second is beautiful. And then Raincloud, your bridegroom and husband are there. Wed them again. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today for many reasons, one of which is to just bug out and cover each other in, in powder paints. Another one is to renew the vows of one of the few couples I know who really make me think twice about my uh, my firm vows to never tie the knot with anyone. It's Basil and Giono. But look at me. Look at these two. I mean, even if they're <laughs> clacking. <laughs> what? smatterings <laughs> I mean if if that isn't if that isn't the language of love I mean look at the amount of saliva they're both producing right now Th- these two I've known them for a year and they're just as in love today as they were the the day I met them so without further ado I do the reword Basil and Giona you may mash your inner kind of mouth stalks against each other just Go for it. It's a fucking... It's a party. Pardon me. <clears throat> Their internal, like, front carapaces open up, and you see just wet flesh mash into each other. <laughs> I pronounce you Xenomorph and Xenomorph! <laughs> Mazel tov. Um, you don't know what it looks like for an alien to cry, but the dozen or so children around drip goo. I'm picturing milky, milky kind of discharge. <laughs> this is the wettest wedding that you have ever been master of Serenoise for. And I've I've been to some pretty damp weddings in my time. <laughs> uh, you are not in possession of the cloak, but know that it is where it's supposed to be right now. Goodbye! Bye! Ta-ta! Welcome, this is Anja's Mindcast for you. Today's topic is about this segment on Mind Talks of Season 1, How Far Can You Go? My dear listeners, in this we are going to see about how we can forge a guide no matter how hard it is. Here, I want you to relax and take a moment like listening to the nature and its creation. So sit back and listen to this soulful episode. So what is success means to you? Success. It is the acid test for all of our achievements of something desired, planned or attempted. And there's another angle. 
which is self introspection it is one tool where it helps us towards the fulfillment of a life's purpose here are some inspiration and imprints for you margaret j wheatley says that without reflection we go blindly on our way creating more unforeseen consequences and failing to achieve anything useful a true legend and actor bruce lee says that defeat is not defeat unless accepted as a reality in your own mind my dear friends never let success get your head and never let negative self introspection get your heart so self introspection is a good tool which is constantly driving us wherever we go then we have an important goal of marching towards the finish line my dear listeners on that note you'll be energized motivated with the segment soon thank you this is rj arav signing off from you on anjas mindcast so here we are having recently featured on bbc's bump birth baby the story doesn't end there tune in each week for no sugar coating about motherhood as a first time mum wife and a list of guests who are ready to tell all welcome to almost grown up The following is a brief bit of the Pedro and Banana podcast. Do you know what really um, freaks me out about the mask, yeah? Everyone's wearing a mask, right? CCTV mm. everywhere, yeah? You mm. think this is a fantastic opportunity for bank robbers. <laughs> yeah, Nobody's I know. Nobody's robbed a bank. Yeah, Nobody's robbed any banks. I've What's been exactly going on? I've the same thing. I thought banks would be getting dropped left, right and centre. Just any kind of crime like that where, where CCTV is necessary. Yeah, where, yeah, where you wear them, everyone's got a mask on, so you can't really identify me. Um, no, it wasn't me. It was him with the mask. Yeah, it was, uh, that's not me. Yeah. That bloke's got a mask on. I don't wear a mask. Yeah. <laughs> put, a, put a hood on, put your mask on. <laughs> that don't even look like Coverage. my shotgun. <laughs> my shotgun's green. That one's black. <laughs> <laughs> I always had this Ferrari. That was the Pedro and Banana podcast. Find them wherever you find podcasts.